Hey everyone, welcome back to Shitcoin Daily. Today we're going to be talking about NFTs and we're going to be doing Tuesdays and Thursdays as crypto news or crypto information to help you get more versed in the crypto space. And today specifically we're talking about NFTs, how can you acquire them and what are they? So the first one that's going to run us through the information so you can understand NFTs a little better before we get into the platforms is Ape and he's going to show you. All right. So two main things you got to understand is something that is fungible and something that's non-fungible. When I first heard fungible, I thought it was just a made up term, you know, by the crypto bros, but actually it's a real definition. So when something is fungible, it means it could be broken down to equal the same thing. So think of it as a hundred dollar bills. You could break it down to a hundred one dollar bills or five twenty dollar bills. That is fungible. Something that could easily be replaced. The, the keyword is easily be replaced. All right. Now, non fungible. Think of it as uh, autographed baseball. Right. Of that one particular game, the guy hit three home runs, and it was his last, you know, retirement. Or maybe it was just a baseball that he signed for that one particular game. He could obviously sign other baseballs, but it won't be the same one that he of signed. So that is what non-fungible is. So if you think about it, we've already had non-fungible throughout our lives. I guess we just put in a label or a different label now, or you know, people are, are familiar with it now as non-fungible. So don't think of it as something that people just made up. So that's what pretty much NFT is. All right. So pretty much a, a non or a, a fungible item is something that can be broken down into equal things that amount to the same thing in any scenario yes uh just think and then non-fungible is like the mona lisa you could replicate it non-fungible means that you know even if you replicate it it's still not going to be the same thing as original so instead of you know think of it as someone repainting the mona lisa or how in the crypto uh world is someone saving the jpeg file of the nft you know and then they say ah i have it or screenshotting it again replica not the original so that's what non-fungible is um on top of that there's three major platforms or you know where you could get them would be on open c open c will be the ethereum network all right it's a whole platform on just ethereum that's pretty much uh, the most popular one uh we also have the solano network soul c which is a different network on its own thing it's again they're they're on their own thing all right we got ethereum we got soul solano on the soul c and finally we got bnb have their own nft network uh called air nft so again they they there are three different things on three different platforms they're they're not really interacting with each other all right think of it as three different languages okay so now ninja is going to guide us through on I guess, how you can purchase them on those platforms and the nitty gritty of it. So the first thing we're going to go into is what is an NFT? You know, Ape explained that it's a non-fungible token, but what is it? Where is it? How is it made? So the first thing is the code that it's written. You know, it's written in what's called SOL um, or an ARC721 contract. Just a contract. You can think of it just like a piece of code attached to the Ethereum network. Um, but after that, it's minted or created. And that's pretty much the last bit of code that it'll ever see. After that, it's stored somewhere. You know, we've had uh, quite a long debate on where it is stored, what it is stored. There's many different methods. You know, there's the there's the first method, which is pretty costly, is storing it on chain, which is you know you're storing your your NFT on the Ethereum network or on whatever chain that it was created on. The uh, second is what's an IPFS or pretty much giving you a URL link to another location. So think of it's going to AWS or somebody's cloud hosting server, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's the also the JSON URL. The JSON URL is used more than the IPFS because it's easier. It's, it's just simple, you know, right where it's at in the code. The code says, hey, this is where it's at, done. That's also done on someone else's server or a hosting service. <clears throat> now, those are two very dangerous ways to do it for the client. So like the buyer, if you own it, that means if it is done that way and the company goes under or the server gets fried or something happens to it and they can't recover it, 
you're out of luck. You just lost your NFT. Um, and this is something that you should take caution and ask those devs how they're storing it. Because, you know, if they want to just, and I don't really think there's pull the rug on NFTs because you still received your art. But if they're just like, all right, we're out of here and they stored it on AWS server and then their monthly billing cycle ends because, you know, they canceled it, your NFT is gone. The picture is gone. You'll never be able to reference it again. So that's why it's very dangerous to do anything related in that aspect. But it's also the most popular. So yeah. Because it's one, it's cost effective. It's really cheap. Two, you don't have to worry about too much. I mean, you're if you're, if you're doing it on AWS, okay, it may cost a little bit. But storing it on chain, you're paying pretty much like a gas fee to put it on there. And if you're doing this on the Ethereum chain which many NFTs are on, you're paying $80, $120 to mint each NFT or create each NFT. So that's probably one of the reasons why this isn't the normal method or the most used, um, just because of expenses. Maybe that's why the off or separate blockchain method was created. So it could be minted on, there's a, uh, there's, for in terms of storing it on a blockchain, you can store it on the original blockchain. If you mint it on Ethereum, you can store it on the Ethereum chain. But there's also an off-chain method that they store it on a separate blockchain that references the Ethereum chain. So one chain referencing another. Yep. So pretty much think of it as this. This is the Ethereum network, and then I make NFT coin whatever. And it's going up and down. Think of that. I build up on it. The more I mint, the more I use, the more I grow, it goes into that. But it's built on the Ethereum network. So think of it as growing out of Ethereum network uh, yeah. and then making my own coin. So that's more of a visual aid so you guys understand when they yeah. say, oh, a reference, you know, the Ethereum network. Just think of this. I created NFT and, it, and I just create more of it. And it yeah, goes up it just, and then me. It's, a it's a literally a chain exclusively for referencing on a different chain. That's yeah. exactly what it's for. And another okay. another good example that Ape had come up with earlier, just for NFTs in a broad sense, your NFT is a house or a piece of land, and the method of either storing it or referencing it is the road that the developer created for you to get to your house. Yeah, so, so you, you have three different roads. You have one word stored on the regular chain, whether it's Solana or Ethereum, that's your first road to get to your house, which is your NFT. You have the second road, which is if it's stored on a separate blockchain, which is a chain referencing that Ethereum or Solana blockchain. Or you have the AWS cloud hosting service, which is your third road. And all of them are the same thing. I mean, it's just how you get to your house. It's just which road is taken that's provided by the developers. And it's yeah. you don't have three to pick from because the developers choose it. It's just what road are they giving you to get there? So, um, yeah, you wanted to go over something further? No, uh, I was going to say, but that's pretty much it for the, our basic explanation of NFTs, how they're stored, how they're made. Um, I know Akira has some examples he wants to kind of explain to you guys and talk about. So, I just make it very clear, again, none of us are fans of NFTs, actually. And I decided to take a risk, per se, and invest money into some nfts because i thought that they would be popular they're called <laughs> meta waifus I, I thought it was funny but it had a lot of hype around it it, it was on the main page of open c it was something that was very popular and i was like you uh, know what it was on soul c on soul c yeah sorry it was on soul c soul tokens. so this was on the solana network so i minted i was like what 16 in total because i first minted 11 or 12 and they were selling. I made my money back. I'm like, oh, crap. I was like, you know, let, let me just mint some more. I found it very weird. And, and Ape says it. He's like, we live in cuckoo land. He was telling me because I had minted these NFTs and sold them before minting was even over. And they sold for a higher price than what I minted them for. And he's like, this is cuckoo land because it's ridiculous. Why don't you just go mint your own for the lower price? And I was selling them for double, triple, quadruple what I had minted them for. It's just that people, I guess, didn't want to take the risk of minting and maybe they got a, a sucky waifu i don't know yeah. so you know i think i think the, the concept there is like i mean take pokemon cards you know the most coveted card game in our generation at least you know everybody knows what pokemon card game is 
people will go online and look for the p specific version edition year was printed version than than trying to go out and go buy a new like pack of eight cards and try to get out yeah and i mean there's there's something for everyone because there's people who do buy those boxes of pokemon cards and open them all and to try to you know get like these cards but your chances of getting the card you want are not so high you know so you just pay for it on oh. the platform and then these this platform provides that so, but the thing is about this is that with Pokemon cards, there's stats, there's things. With these NFT, no one, there's no meta, there, there's, there's no future which... playable characters. At least in the in the term that Brandon bought, these are future playable characters. But again, as of right now, the value is determined by the seller and the buyer. All right. So there's no like, oh well, if she has this outfit, she is a higher value. The creator themselves don't say, okay, this is the most valuable. This is, it's just up to the buyer and the seller. If someone was yeah. willing to buy it, it, it's capitalism. The seller puts it at a price, the buyer buys it, then it's worth that. That's it, plain and simple. So uh, this so is this is something that is very um interesting because just like these shit tokens that we talk about, they gain some popularity. But then they might disappear. Like no one no one cares anymore. So NFTs, I, I believe, and I am not, you know, too versed in the NFT market because these are the first and only NFTs I bought. But these NFTs, you know, on day one, I sold 10. And then over the past two weeks, not two weeks, I think it's like a week and a half. Yeah. I've only sold two and I have eight more, which is the eight that you've seen on screen. So NFTs could suffer this from the same thing. You know, the, at the beginning, people might be willing to pay that price. I sold one for eight soul, which at the time was like, I don't know what it was, like $2,500. Yeah. But now they're not selling, you know, and who's to say that they will sell? Maybe they, I have sold two in the past couple of days, but who knows if they will? Maybe they're forgotten. You know, that value, that initial hype has now disappeared and the NFTs are now worthless because like Ape said, it's determined based off buyer and seller. Once it's minted, there's nothing determining price except market what people want for it. And there's so many different ones that you might be stuck with the one that nobody wants. So it, it's, it's a weird thing. And, you know, if you're not going for the if you're not going for an NFT project, that's just like, all right, this becomes like Board 8 Yacht Club or, you know, one of those very popular ones. Then you might be stuck with just, uh, you know, a road that references some JPEG, you know, how we explain. So. You know, you, you got the house, you got the road, it's worth nothing. No one wants to buy it. So yeah. it, it really just depends. NFTs is a weird thing. It's it's based off speculation, just like other cryptos, but it's a picture. You're not you're not speculating coins, you're speculating photos. It's yeah. I'm not much of an artist, so I don't So the thing about it is that when I wanna sell one crypto coin, you know, let's say uh a safe moon or whatever made a doge coin a coin is a coin right i can go ahead if someone wants to buy a coin i can sell the coin they're all the same and i just put the sell order with nfts now you go into specifics not only is it like okay it's not a coin and a coin since they're all so different and unique now you have to go into a subcategory of like okay not only does it have to be on a hype coin or nft let's say it has to be something that people would actually want and that you know it just it just makes it harder for you as a seller. It's like, okay, not only do I have to get a, a, a hype coin or NFT in this case, my individual coin or NFT has to be popular or in demand or someone likes it. So yeah. it's just another barrier for yourself. So yeah. keep and that in mind. And it's also hard to determine price because they're all so unique. There's none like the other. There's similar ones, but there's none like the other. So you have to go through the history you know, like these four that you see right now, or eight, they're all different, but they all have different prices, you know? So you have to go through the history and see, okay, these NFTs sold for this price, and you, you yourself have to determine how much am I going to list this NFT for? And that could go good or bad. You could list it for a high price, like the one you see for 10 soul. No one looks at it. I thought that one looks better, but you have the one right next to it for four soul, and 46 people have viewed it, you know? So... It's hard to determine and you could you could overprice it and it sells or you could underprice it and it sells. No one's going to know. Only you, you know, I, so it's I, hard. I, I think is at least with these NFTs, when you're when it first starts, you everyone's trying to set up the meta for it or what's selling. I'm pretty sure like, let's say a year down the road, if they haven't sold 
the community more or less knows that oh this is worth more or this is worth less or uh, pain care is worth more because there's only like one out of a million you feel me so it, 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 we'll see if you know like the more time there is just like pokemon cards you know i'm pretty sure when it first came out it, it, it you know the hype or the meta was being created yeah yeah so We'll just give our, our closing thoughts on this. This is pretty much the information on NFTs and the risks that you would have to take. You know, do you have the eye of an artist <laughs> to sell your <laughs> NFTs? I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. My closing thoughts, it's interesting. It, again, I, I'm not an artist. I just priced these things because I thought they looked cool, yeah. you know? And I still am not a fan of NFTs. After doing the research, after purchasing some myself, I don't like them. That's just me. Um, I don't like NFTs what they are now, but I'm not. Uh, but the technology inside of them isn't what I'm against. So, again, right now everything's just JPEG. All you're buying is access to that JPEG, the file, the picture. I'm not. I'm not into it. What I am liking is the technology behind it. Um, it could have useful case, but as of right now, it's just mostly pumping and dumping onto someone else. There's no. Again, no card game, at least. At least a card game says that, you know, it dictates what something worth by the power structures. Right now, this is just all, just like in, in fine art. Don't, don't think this is just NFT. This is my personal thing about fine art as well. It's up to the seller or the, or the you know, buyer, but it's the same thing with fine arts. That's why I'm not into the arts or NFTs, just because it's so speculative. And it's up to whoever buys it and sells it to determine the price. My opinion of it is, I guess, I'm more on the better side than these guys, because I'm I've dealt with gamers a lot, and you know we always buy cosmetics for games. If you look at NFTs and their projected future uses, they're all cosmetics. They're just things that you're going to be using in games. Not like we haven't been buying those before off of Steam, off of Ubisoft, Fortnite. Off of whatever, a Fortnite, exactly things that we've already been using are just getting another name of so, course i think it would be cool if you can like if i can go right now into the meta metaverse or facebook metaverse and i could use it yeah sure it provides some unique value it still doesn't change the fact that you have to determine the price for it but at exactly, least you can yeah. use it so yeah. uh, but mind you these nfts that i minted cost 1.2 soul i believe yeah, like yeah, 300 dollars so it's a three hundred dollar costume, <laughs> you know. You know it's it's expensive. You know, and hey, so we, we've seen that on regular cosmetic markets. I mean, you look, you look at Steam and and their marketplace. You will find things for games like Dota Two. You'll find CS Go. Things actually do get up there. You know, I've seen items. For yeah, but for most transactions are like five dollars, two dollars, twenty nah, bucks, most, and a majority of transactions, at least on those games, ranges from ten to fifty dollars. Well, you always see the high rent stuff, but I'm again, most of their things are, or the cheaper stuff sells a lot more than the more expensive. Obviously, you'll have that one cosmetic or couple that's a hundred dollars, but for the most people, they'll spend a five bucks to ten dollars. Maybe if they're yeah, crazy, right now, right now, NFTs are overpriced for what yeah, it yeah. is, it's overpriced. The price needs to come way down, and that these high value price targets are only reserved for like the very exclusive kind of deals like the louis vuittons of nfts and to tell you the truth the meta waifus is not you know it's cool it's not 300 dollars. or in the case of 10 soul it's not you know 2500 dollars. you know well, so well that's the same thing with uh with board a club you know they have a it's two hundred thousand dollars on celebrities again just same thing with fine art. Don't think of it as just NFT. My thing is against fine art as well. Spending a couple million dollars for painting of whatever, not really my thing. But again, to each his own. If you have your money, spend it how you want it. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for this episode on NFTs. Let us know what you think. If you're a fan of NFTs, leave a comment down below. Or if you have purchased any and let us know if we should look into any NFTs and if you think we're wrong on our opinion. But that's it. Please subscribe, like, again, leave a comment down below, and we'll see everyone tomorrow. All right, guys.